Can you believe it's already the fourth Sunday in the month of January in this new year that God has given us? And we are grateful uh, for this time together. Thank you so much. We had, uh, I understand we had some glitches or whatever upstairs, but see how God repairs things. Yeah. Do not have a witness here? He just puts it all together. And I am delighted that we have the chance to celebrate the life of Jesus Christ and the importance of what it means to every one of our lives. Amen. If you've got something to praise God for, I just I don't care if it's just one thing, I don't care if it's half a thing. I just want you to give God some big praise. Because he's worthy. How many of you know he's worthy? He's worthy to be praised. Amen. Our text for the morning comes from the book of Exodus, the third chapter. Verses 9 to 12. This is a very familiar passage. Uh, and as we share in this passage today, I want to remind us that it may be old, uh, it may seem old, but the one thing that I have prayed to God for since 2012, so 10 years, and that is to see something new in every passage of Scripture we open. Amen. And guess what? Yes. He does that. Do I have a witness here? You ask for it, he'll, he'll do it. Uh, the text says in the New King James Version, Now therefore behold, the cry of the children of Israel has come to me, and I have also seen the oppression with which the Egyptians oppress them. Come now therefore, and I will send you to Pharaoh that you may bring my people, the children of Israel, out of Egypt. I'd love to just pause there for a moment and look around and see everybody's face when it comes to this passage because this is God talking to Moses. Come on now. But, but truthfully, I believe in the 21st century, God is talking to us. Every one of us. Come on, somebody. If you know what I'm talking about. Every one of us. But Moses said to God, this is how you know that he's your cousin. Who am I that I should go to Pharaoh and that I should bring the children of Israel out of Egypt? And so, my friends, as we hear this this morning, this, um, this sermon will be preached in segments because there's no way to get all of the spiritual juice out of this passage in just one sermon. Come on, somebody, right? So this will be in segments. Today I want to talk about the divine sin. The divine sin. Let us pray. Now, therefore, O oh God, we come. Thanking you for this moment. Thank you for being so good to us and bringing us together from near and far. And as we come together today, Lord, we are delighted to know that there is always a word from the Lord. And so we come right now. We come to you in this hour, asking you, Lord, to help us to make this plain, open our hearts to hear, open our minds and our spirit, dear God, to receive. And we pray, Lord, that we get the message and that we use it as we go about this week, knowing that we have a God who hears us and a God who acts on our behalf. We love you and we thank you and ask your blessings upon those assembled. Pray your blessings upon your word. Pray your blessings upon your messenger. And may we use what we receive to be better and stronger for you everywhere in your son. Jesus' precious name we pray. Amen, amen, and amen. If you came to get a word today, you've got a big hand of praise. And a big hand of praise. You may be seated. The backdrops of this passage today reminds us of how it started. Here is one who was born to a mother 
became a foster child because of the basket of reeds and the Pharaoh's daughter finding this young man, this young baby in the water and taking him into the Pharaoh's house and recognizing the family members were able to help raise him. And at 40, he saw one Egyptian taking advantage of a Jew. And he stepped in, and as it turns out, this is the record now. As it turns out, that person, uh, that Egyptian, was killed. And this 40-year-old God sent to the Midian Desert for the next 40 years to shepherd sheep. I've got, I've got a Bible student here somewhere. And for 40 years, that's what he did. And at 80 years old, God came to him, the Bible says, as we have a theophany, meaning that God had a personal one-on-one -on -one conversation with Moses. Moses was minding his business. Can I park for a moment and say, isn't it funny how God does stuff while we're minding our own business and then all of a sudden here he comes and what we somehow fail to remember is that God in all of those 40 years is not like he forgot that Moses was out there. Do I have a witness here? He was getting Moses ready and sometimes as I have loved to tell us, and by the way, remind myself that sometimes when we're going through it, I know some people in here who've gone through some stuff. If I got a witness here somewhere, I just want us to remember that when we go through some stuff, God is getting us ready for the next thing. Do, do, do I have a witness? And, and in fact, when you look at your life, you can see why it is. You may not have liked it. Let me stop for just a moment. You may not have liked it at all. But you went through it because God had a plan that said that this is what you must go through to get ready and have the strength for what this is up here, whatever that is. Amen. So while Moses was minding his own business handling a group of sheep out in the Midianite desert, one day as he was doing that, the backdrop of this story tells me that God's house opened up. Right. Watch, watch this, watch this somebody. God's house opened up. Somebody said, well, wait a minute, Pastor, there wasn't, there wasn't a, 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 there wasn't a synagogue or there wasn't a church out there in the desert. Do I, are my Bible students with me right now? Because as I said, I alluded to this just a moment ago, and that is wherever God is, that is the house of God. Do I have a witness here? And if that's the case, what we realize is that when God starts speaking through the burning bush that was burning but not consumed. Do I have a witness here? I'm so glad about that. Because never has there been one who's able to do something like that except God. And indeed, that Moses was so blown away by what he saw. And the reason why I love in this passage looking for something new is that I've never preached that part of it before. And that is that this is the house of God. How, preacher, do you know that it's the house of God? I'm so glad you asked. Because he told him in the text, he said, take your, Lord Jesus. Now, friends, he says in the text, take your shoes off. Because this is what? This is holy ground. Do I have a witness here? And I want you to know that not only is this holy ground, this is sacred space. And God is talking to Moses and he's talking through the burning bush. And I come to you today to tell you that God is still talking through burning bushes to the people of God everywhere. Talking to us about the fact that he is not only real, and I love that when John P. Key sings that song. That's an old song of the church. Jesus is real. Do I have a witness here? I know somebody knows what I'm talking about. The fact is what we know is that he is real and recognize that in this particular passage of scripture, Moses is listening and I'm sure shocked by God that he's shown up this way. He's shown up this way, and I'm sure that he's obedient and takes his shoes off because he said this is holy ground. 
God makes a statement. In fact, he repeats his statement as well, that I have heard the voice and the cry of my children in Israel. I've heard and seen their oppression. I've heard and seen what the Egyptians are trying to do to them. And I need somebody to go down there and I need somebody to release them from the oppression that they're dealing with right now. My friends, I look at that text and I'm reminded that God is so powerful, he could do it himself. But there's a reason why he stopped and asked this 80-year-old man to go to, 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 the, to, to Pharaoh and tell him to let my people go. I promise you, as I look at the text and as you look at the text, what you realize is that while God is as powerful as the day is long and he doesn't have to ask anybody permission, what's neat is how God wants to use you and me, use our voices, use our hopes, use our dreams, use our walk, use our talk, use our testimony to let somebody else know that this is God's ground, this is holy ground, and God wants because he's heard the cry of his people. I promise you as we live in this crazy place that we live today in the 21st century, if I can shift the camera for a minute, I want to remind you that as we look around today, we see so much devastation that at times it makes you not want to even uh, 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 turn on the news yeah. and, and, and listen to other stuff because many times it can just literally be depressing. Yeah. Preacher, what are you talking yeah. about? Where you see the flooding that happens, where you see weather change in places that you never heard of before, that you see fires that literally give people a matter of moments yeah. of escape, where you see hatred yeah. all around, where you see a voting rights bill that can't get one person from the other side to actually vote for it. Now I'm going to pause for a minute because right. somebody's going to say that pastor's preaching politics. No, pastor's preaching what's happening in society today and we don't need to be silent about it because the fact of the matter is I would like to believe that black people and brown people and elderly people should stand up and say don't marginalize my right to vote. Don't marginalize my ability to get to the ballot. Don't marginalize my ability when all you're doing is you're doing it because you're trying to make sure that less number of black people and brown people and, and, and senior citizens can have access to the ballot box. That's just a reality. And I'd like to believe that the cries of the people are bigger than the cries of those who are trying to do this. And can I park for just a minute? I just need to tell you this, and this isn't about being a Democrat, Republican, Independent. Y'all know I'm an Independent, but here's what I want to tell you. I want to tell you that I love the fact that people who uh, trade in evil, let, let me, let, let me, I know, I know I've got somebody who understands what I'm talking about. They get up in the morning thinking evil. They eat breakfast thinking evil. They eat lunch thinking evil. They eat dinner thinking evil. They go to bed thinking evil and trying to do something to literally dismember people spiritually and physically. Well, I, may, I, I need them to know they need to understand that we are the children of God. We are the children of Martin. We are the children of Malcolm. We are the children of Coretta. We are the children of Bahamia. We are the children of Phyllis Wheatley. We are the children of, of, of Little Moses, of Harriet Tubman. We are the children of them, and their spirit continues to move us on. And no matter what they do to try to stop us from the vote, we are going to get up and vote anyhow. Stop us, we'll get up, we'll keep up, we'll stand up, we'll stand up, we'll pray up. The matter is that we do this not just because we're black or brown, we do it, and not just because we have elderly, but we do it because we know that we've got white allies who understand that this is your fight as well as our fight. Let me just say that. We know this is your fight 
as well as our fight. Martin Luther King was right when he said that no person is free until all people are free, and that injustice anywhere is a threat to justice everywhere. And that we as God's people know that we live in a democracy and we're gonna fight to keep this democracy, to keep the ability for us to be free. And it means that we've got to fight for it. We've got to hope for it. We've got to pray for it. We've got to march for it. Whatever we've got to do, we're going to keep on doing that. God says, I hear the cry of the children of Israel. I've got to believe that this passage is so germane to God saying, I hear the cries of the people in the 21st century. Somehow I believe that God hears us. I believe that God sees us, that when somebody goes into a shopping mall and uses guns to kill innocent people, something's wrong with that. And I believe that God hears the cries of the people. I believe that when somebody goes into a synagogue like they did down in Texas a week ago Saturday and, and hold hostage a rabbi, and three other people and for 11 hours it is not clear what is going to happen i tell you and i've said this more than once the fact of the matter is somebody coming after my jewish and your jewish brothers and sisters is like coming after you and i they are our brothers and sisters because here's what i know the fact of the matter is that very same thing happens in churches and mosques and synagogues everywhere and we ought to be people of God who ought to care about the fact that somebody deranged goes and does something like that. Amen belongs right there. God says I hear the cry of my people and I've also seen the oppression for which the Egyptians oppress them. This is segment number one. I came to tell you today that from this very pulpit stood that same Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. in November of 1961. But I must say that the spirit of him and so many who walked with him and those who in history, their names are not recorded. But what we have to remember, they are your mothers and fathers. They are your and my grandmothers and grandfathers and people of all walks of life who saw and heard what was going on and they determined that they could not rest and be silent, that people like a Jewish woman, uh, Viola Liuzzo, who lived in Detroit, Michigan, saw what was happening down in Mississippi and Alabama and other parts of the South, and she left home and told her husband, I've got to go help the people down there because what's happening is not right. She lost her life going down there, but she saved her life spiritually because what she did was something bigger than herself because she saw that humanity was being assaulted. And today, my friends, in the 21st century, humanity is being assaulted. And the reason why we need to keep opening our mouth is somebody needs to know the message of the church is that we believe in love and not hate. We believe in unity and not division. We believe in the importance of brotherhood and sisterhood no matter what. We believe that God is the one that will take care of all these other issues that when we talk about, well, is that person really my brother? Is that person really my sister? Is that person, do, do, they, do, they, do they pray to the same God I pray? Here's the thing. I came to tell you that I'm going to love everybody because that's what the Word of God says. In John 13, 34, he said, I give you a new commandment, and that is that you love one another and that people will know who you are and how you're called by my name because you love one another. And, and truthfully, can I just be truthful for a minute? I need to part for just a minute and say, I get upset when Christians don't like each other. I get messed up when people in church don't like each other. And I don't know why it is that we serve the same God and we have problems with each other. So whatever's going on out there, all I know is God is big enough to handle all of that. And all of that doesn't belong to me. What belongs to you and me is to walk in this world and show somebody Jesus living through every one of us. Do I have a witness here somewhere? Because the fact of the matter is you and I have given our lives to Christ. 
And I believe that there's some people from a lot of different walks of life who are going to give their life to Christ. Not because they've read the Bible from Genesis to Revelation, but because they've read you and me from beginning to end and they figured out that there's something about the light of Christ that is in you and I. Why, preacher, do you say that? Because he said when you show up in the world, you are the, light, the salt of the earth and you are the light of the world. And I'm just dumb enough to believe that we've got some light in us that people see and want to be a part of that light. And I came to tell you, don't let your light, don't let it be put down and, and pressed down by anything that's going on. I need you to lift up the light, he said, so that people might see your good works and they might glorify the Father who is in heaven. He said, I hear the cry of the children in this segment. I hear and see the oppression that the Egyptians are placing on them. I need to let somebody know that in the 21st century, God hears the cry of the people of God who are saying, Lord, will you come now? Lord, will you bring us together? Lord, will you stop all the hatred? Lord, will you stop all the division? Lord, will you stop all the disunity? Lord, will you stop all the lying out there? Lord, will you stop all this separation? And I believe, my friends, just like I believe my name, I came to tell you today that God hears the cries of the children. The question is, are the church is the church ready to open its mouth and to say this is the way we need to go and tell the world that we are not believers in hate we are not believers in disunity we are not believers in lying we are not believers in separation we are not believers in all this stuff but that we will no matter what if you don't want to hear our message don't listen but that our message is a message of love. Our message is a message of hope. Our message is a message of forgiveness. Our message is a message of redemption. Our message is a message of bringing us together and helping us work together, walk together, talk together, testify together, sing together, praise together, and have a great time in the Lord together. Do I have a witness here? He says, I've also seen the oppression the Egyptians oppress them with. I came to tell you for black and brown and for elderly, don't think God's not paying attention. And what we've seen so many times throughout our Bible where we've seen people who've tried to hurt and kill other people. Yes. I, I give you my brother A. Haman for a moment who thought somehow he was going to take out Mordecai and then ultimately all of the Jews and he had already established a guillotine to take care of people and the same guillotine that he put together was the same one that got used against him and he's the one that died because God's people were saved. Do I have a witness here? I can go on down throughout the Bible but I want you to know that it's important for us to remember that you are not children. You are not children of defeat. We are children of victory. Do I have a witness here? We are children of victory. And we need to recognize that the world looks at us crazy and strange. But what this world needs to know is it's not even a fair fight. What do you mean, preacher? I'm so glad you asked. If you go see your favorite sports team play another team, what you know is at the beginning of the game, you can't tell who's going to win. At halftime, you can't tell who's going to win. With the matter of seconds left, you're not sure who's going to win. Here's what I want you to know. From the beginning to the middle to the end, we already know who's going to win because the, the, the fight happened a long time ago and the victory happened on the cross. The victory happened in the grave. The victory happened on the third day morning. The victory continues to be the victory even today. God hears the cries of his people. And I promise you we will be victorious because we start out victorious. Because when you come and the world comes to try to fight Christ, tries to fight 
what the church is all about. It's not even a fair fight because the victory is already won. Do I have to witness here? And I don't care how the world tries to assail us. I don't care how they talk about us. I don't care how they scandalize us. I don't care how they try to burn our churches down, our houses of worship down. I don't care how they try to show up in guns and hate and all that stuff. The world needs to know the church has already won, that Jesus is still supreme, and one day he's coming back again to claim that which is his. Today, my friends, he said, I heard, and because I've heard, I'm going to take action. And that's the beautiful thing about God is that he hears and takes action all the time. Aren't you glad yes. that you've got somebody that advocates for you all the time? When I come back to you, I will talk to you prayerfully about the great sin. And then I will talk to you, thirdly, about the fact that we feel completely inadequate. Do I have a witness here? Yes. How many times do we feel inadequate when God calls us? to get something done, but I came to tell you that he is more than able to fortify every one of us. Amen. Amen. Let's give God a big hand of praise. <laughs> Does anybody here who does not know Jesus for themselves, or they wish to make a public declaration about where they would like to go and what they would like to be and how they would like to give their life to Christ, I just want you to know that you have that opportunity to do that right here in this church, or we'll facilitate a relationship with another church if that's what you would wish. Today, what I know is more than anything else is I want people to be saved, amen? Let's give God a praise. I want people to be saved. And I don't know how you can live through this ugly morass that we're living through right now and don't know Jesus. I feel sorry for anybody who doesn't know him, but here's what I do know, I'm grateful that we know who he is. Do I have a witness here? I am grateful that we know who he is. So at the end of the service, if you would like to give your life to Christ, if you would like to renew your relationship with him, I would ask you to please uh, make it your business to do so. Elder Tabor is going to come and give us uh, the prayer for our tithes and offering. I'm going to ask you if you would get your tithes and offering in your hand. And remember that you can pay by check, you can pay by cash app, uh, uh, dollar sign Vancouver Avenue, uh, capital V, capital A, and that uh, you can give by Tithely on our uh, website.